All right. So one of my favorite learnings and teachings from the Sanskrit tantric yogic uh, philosophy is this teaching of Spanda. I feel like it's um, something we should all know about, something we all do know about, but don't. Um, I don't see anything in our Western culture generally that talks about this. And spanda uh, literally means like the vibration or the uh, trembling, the quivering of life force energy. So that pulsing in and out of reality, in and out of being, in and out of different states of being. As in San all Sanskrit words, there are many, many different meanings. So I'm just going to personally extrapolate and talk about how life force energy contracts and expands a situation, all of life, <laughs> um, and the situation that we're in now with pandemic and with California being on fire are just times that, or any dark times, you know, or, or because then we know the light's coming. Spanda, that pulsation from one thing to the next, the breath in and out, the day and the night, the contraction of feelings and of experience, the expansion of relating and seeing all the things and not just the one or the other, but that vibration that's constantly there in between. And then we feel it kind of go one way and kind of go the other way. And, and so it is right now with what we're in, life coming in and out of form, all of ourselves feeling that contraction and expansion of being. And as it is always with life that we learn through taking care of ourselves or others. Just as we think we are getting to know something or some way of being, just as we think we've got something figured out, it changes. <laughs> One door closes, another opens, that whole thing. We're always being invited to see things anew, to experience things anew. And so I wanted to share with you this little reading and a practice of Spanda today. So we'll do an asana practice that really focuses on that kind of folding or turning in and back into the unfolding and the becoming. Maybe something new, maybe something you didn't know you were. It's new perspectives on things as we're invited to with yoga, going where we have not gone before, even if we've practiced a million times. I started reading last night um, this book by Mary Oliver, who I've read lots of her poetry, but I hadn't read so much of the essays. And wow, oh, swoon. I had to read the beginning of the book twice. This is from the book Upstream. And I'm just going to read the very beginning to you, and I'm just tempted to read it to you every day until we're all done the book together. But for now, this one today, Upstream. One tree is like another tree, but not too much. One tulip is like the next tulip, but not altogether. More or less like people, a general outline, then the stunning individual strokes. Hello, Tom. Hello, Andy. Hello, David, Daria, Ariel, and Tamara. Hello, Archibald Violet and Clarissa Bluebell. Hello, Lillian Willow and Noah the Oak. I have hugged and kissed every first day of spring for the last 30 years. And in reply, its thousands of leaves tremble. What a life is ours. Doesn't anybody in the world anymore want to get up in the middle of the night and sing? In the beginning, I was so young and such a stranger to myself. 
I hardly existed. I had to go out into the world and see it and hear it and react to it before I knew at all who I was, what I was, what I wanted to be. Wordsworth studied himself and found the subject astonishing. Actually, what he studied was his relationship to the harmonies and also the discords of the natural world. That's what created the excitement. I'm going to stop there for now, although I could go on. That's part of what inspired me to relate this to Sponda is how we do relate who we are to our experience of the world, how the natural world is constantly teaching us about ourselves. And when it is changing <laughs> so much as it does and our moods change so much, like our personal weather and the weather around us is feeling so unpredictable and so ever-changing that it really seems like we're all in this dynamic flux and flow or have the invitation to be about who we are who we want to be, how we're choosing to show up, how we're showing up reactively. Ah, so much. And so like Wordsworth and like Mary Oliver and like we're invited to by centuries of yogis, we study ourselves and we practice with intention, this turning in, this contraction and this opening out, this courageous expansion Ah, and then who are we? So take pause, if you will, to turn in and to invite this wonder question today, this question that I hope you know never needs one final answer about who you are. And welcome this one breath and let this one breath embrace all of your being. Welcome today the mystery of who you are. Welcome today the wonder of what it is to be alive here, now, moment to moment. Listen to your breath, create that contraction in the back of the throat for the ujjayi breath, to warm it, to bring your attention to the sound of it and watch the breath, the breath, your first and last teacher as an embodied being, reminding us of the necessary letting goes of the necessary receiving and opening to what's coming. Of the importance of every bit between the two. It's not one or the other. It's full, less full, less full, not full, half full, empty, little bit, little bit, all the way, every gradient of the spectrum part of our experience, part of the invitation, part of the necessity of taking pause, possibly at the top of the inhale, to notice fullness, paying attention to the path that we take in the releasing and pausing to notice the emptiness and how still we're okay there and who are we there.
And as you listen to the breath this morning and open to receive whatever is present for you today in the body mind, may we remember our innate wholeness and fullness. And from that expansive pool of potential, what would you choose to focus on today? What would you choose to cultivate or to celebrate or expand through your body mind, through your life? See it, breathe it, imagine it, present tense, affirmative, fully realized here and now, I am. So hung, hung sa. Exhale and touch the earth, ground down. Imagine letting anything go just for now that's not serving your practice. And as we connect to earth here, let us give thanks for her powers of transmutation and for how we are nourished and held and supported. May we give thanks as well to the bones of our ancestors, to the stories and the teachings of those who've come before us. May we use our discernment to choose what we would take forward with us. And let's open the arms wide and gather up energetically, reach to the sky and bring the palms together and imagine, if you will, drawing that expansive sky down into your mind, bringing the hands together down through mind center, down into the heart with the mind and pause at the heart, press into the palms, use that press in contraction of your hands to work an expansion of heart center, shoulders on the back, heart lifts to the hands. Rest your hands on your heart in any way. And again, breathe and repeat your mantra, your yes, I am. I am riding the waves of life with power and grace. I am open with trust to the flow of life. I am curious, creative, compassion. I am love and revolution. Whatever it is for you, breathe it, repeat it. Exhale and pour your breath out. Inhale your yes, if you will join me, one great om. Oh. Om, the ground of being, the great potential, all that is. And then press, if you will, into your pinkies and thumbs and blossom your fingers open into Lotus Mudra, the becoming, the unfolding of your fullness. And if you will, breathe into that again with your intention, seeing it rippling out through your body, mind, your life, into your actions and interactions out into the world. May all beings benefit. Inhale your yes, if you will, with me, one hring.
and gently unfold yourself in order to refold yourself onto your mat. Let's begin in child's pose, one of our most contracted poses. And we're gonna play with just a few sequences today of um, contraction to expansion. So as you're ready, find your way to your mat. You may wanna have a block or two for lunges and things. You may wanna have a I think that's all for today or whatever props you need, but I think so that. So press yourselves back in child's pose, toes together, knees wide, belly soft between your thighs, and arms extended out in front. Extended child's pose and push your hips back. Press your hips into your heels and just give a little wiggle, hip side to side and breathe your lower back. Breathe wherever sensation is arising. If by any chance this is too much on the knees, please have a folded blanket or pillow behind the knees or under the knees, depending on how it's triggering you. And feed your breath into your low back. Imagine it there. See if you can get a sense of stretch from the breath expanding your lower back. Especially if there's stuff going on in the lower back for you, imagine that breath just kind of washing through there, clearing away any stagnancy or swelling or irritation, whatever's present. And as you exhale, soft tongue, soft jaw, letting go breaths. Let's take one Brahmari or bee's breath here before we begin to unfold. So like the end of the Om, an NG sound, the lips stay open and we look to vibrate in the third eye center. Exhale empty, inhale your yes. Mm. Inhale, press back, stretch it out as you exhale, slowly lift from your navel and sense into your own unfolding. And really as much as you can, I encourage you to use the physical unfolding in a connection with your imagination, with your um, body senses to imagine that energetic unfolding of your intention, of your courage, of your unconditional love, whatever it is, and slowly coming to hands and knees. Pull hands and knees towards one another, shoulders down the back. Open your heart as you lift the tail. As you exhale, press the earth away, lift the navel as you drop the tail, and cave the heart in. Follow your breath. Playing with that contraction and expansion. Deep, full breaths, paying attention to that whole spectrum in between. And those little spots where maybe it feels sticky, where there's that little quiver, quiver or resistance before the breakthrough to your other end of the spectrum. And when we pay attention to those little areas, maybe even pausing in them, then maybe you can find a little further, a little deeper the next time the ends of the spectrum expanding. And as we move in this way with intention, with attention, we make our practice a ritual. We repattern our subconscious minds. We 
actually expand our sense of self and how we show up in the world and our potential into this reality. Let's begin to build here, if you will. Turn your toes under and stretch your hips back to your heels at first again. Inhale, push the earth away. And as you exhale, lift uh, the knees just a little bit at first. So first we're going to come into bear. And for um, sacroiliac challenges, for stuff that's happening around your SI joint or your lower back on one side is often that, then... This is a great pose for that. You could even do this with a block between your thighs. Spin the block back right now. Imagine, if you will, that you've got a block there. And spin it back. Stay hugging in. Feel how the sits bones widen from that action. Inner thighs spin back. Block spinning back. Hugging in. Lots of muscular action. Sits bones widen. And then lengthen the tailbone into that space. Melt your heart. Strong hands. Claw the fingers so the wrists and hands don't get tired. And then with our bear walk, with our bear, we're going to take it for a walk. So imagine now, maybe even feel your sacrum that is pretty level to the ground. Imagine now putting like a bowl of soup on your sacrum and keep it there. And then slowly we're going to move one foot forward without spilling that soup and the opposite hand forward and then opposite foot, opposite hand. Try not to spill the soup at all. Not at all. And maybe do it at the same time. Foot in hand. And once you get to the edge of your available space, you'll take that backwards. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Not about repetitions or how far we go. It's about keeping that soup from spilling. And thereby, really, the muscular energy that's stabilizing the connection of our SI joint. And forward and back, slow and steady, in your own time, a few more breaths. Beautiful focus, everyone. Last breath or so. And then begin to find center. Keep that muscular action. Hug into your block and spin it back even more as you straighten your legs. Downward dog. Unfolding, unfolding long legs now. Keep them bent as much as you need, especially if there's any hamstring pulls or whatever there. Optionally, instead of st uh, stillness, when something is challenging, it's helpful to bend and come out of it a bit and then straighten and lean back into wherever the edge is so just play with that and if it's just one side that's challenged we want to give attention to that and ask the other side to slow down a little bit so bending and straightening as you like even coming back to hands and knees and then slowly back into downward dog whatever you need to take breaks we're gonna have a few more breaths here downward dog hands and knees fine whenever you like bear walk a little slower today so we welcome that full moon energy ground into the philosophy in our physical practice today of spanda and then down dog or all fours it's up to you we're going to do just some little hip opening here you might step your left foot a little more towards midline squeeze to center hugging into core and grow your right leg up and back to the sky pull up and back from that leg and then bend the knee flex the foot and press your hip open breathe the front of that hip keep the shoulders as square as you can and you could stay just pressing open there or big hip circles. Inhale, open circle. Exhale, close the circle. Again, playing atten paying attention to the breath and spanda. And not just trying to do a bunch of reps here, but really noticing what happens when you slow down in the musculature, in the breath. And switch directions.
and then press that foot open press it open 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 and maybe press that foot open so much it starts getting really heavy and wants to move towards the ground and that right heel gets heavy and the right hand gets light and steps behind the left knee wow going big already wild thing <laughs> yep stretch it out you could be on the bottom shin here you could be staying the press open, or maybe you're moving into wild thing. And if you are, well, tomorrow's a full moon. So it's pretty dang full today. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. That's what happens when there's a full moon. Yeah. Inhale, reach. Exhale, knee to the nose. We're going to take a little break off the hands and bring the knee all the way forward and between the hands. Now, I'm not inviting you into a full pigeon unless you want to go there. If your body invites you, go. Otherwise, more like kind of a swan. So knee is more towards midline. Heel, rather, is towards midline. Knee can be as wide as you like, but very gentle form of pigeon or swan hip opening. You could rest your head on elbows, fists, a block, whatever it is. Again, we don't want any sharp knee pain. So if there's knee pain, please put a anything supportive under your shin or come up a little higher or lay on your back and take the same shape. Whatever is right for you, please be present with the communication from your body. And then sense into that space you're making, into the work that you're doing there. And breathe and repeat your intention, inviting that energy to become your yes. That space to become rich and full with your yes to life. I am. Last breath or two here. Next inhale, press into your hands and walk up onto your hands and pull back on the earth and puff up your chest. Again, slowly unfolding. And as you exhale, turn your back toes under. Lift the knee a bit and slide that front foot back. Both knees down, both toes together. Press your heels back, back to our starting point. You might roll your palms up here to the sky, getting a little stretch in the shoulders and the thoracic spine. Stay and play with that or palms together. Bend into them and walk the elbows forward. Stretch through your triceps. Reach your heart to the earth and breathe your intention, your yes. Simply breathful here, or again, add a Brahmari or bees breath. Next, inhale, extend the arms out in front of you. Exhale, lift from your navel, ripple back up to all fours. You're welcome to go a regular cow and cat there as you like or when you're ready. I want to invite you into a spiraling cow and cat. So big circles, rolling the head, full circle, rolling the hips and everything in between, full circle. And at the bottom, wag your tail, switch directions. And then find centers, claw your fingertips, soft in your heart, strong core, inhale, toes under, exhale, pull the hips back towards the heels and lift the knees, keep pulling the hips back to the heels, chest towards your thighs, straighten your arms out mostly, keep a tiny bend in the elbows and scoop them towards one another, wrap the shoulders away, 
back to our bear. You could hold steady here. You could pulse from here into down dog or about four breaths. Maybe again, play with that bear walk. Try to hug into the core so strong that you can lift the opposite hand and foot at the same time and move them at the same time. You can always do it op um, you know, alternately at first. Really try not to spill your soup. Keep that sacrum level with the earth as much as you can. And then make your way back to neutral center. Slowly begin to expand downward dog. Again, if anything's tricky there, or just because the pulsation's great, bending and straightening from down dog back towards your bear, back into down dog. And then as you're ready, slow and steady, downward dog, strong core, pull back, step that right foot to midline. Hug into your core, into your midline, and grow your left foot up and back to the sky. Pull up and back from that foot, lengthening spine, chest towards thigh. And then bend that top knee, flex the foot, and press the hip open, open, open. Keep the shoulder squaring, hands and shoulders equally active and aligned as much as possible. Breathe the front of the left hip, stay with that, or as inspired, big hip circles. Exhale to close, inhale to open. And then take your time, switch directions. And then as you're ready, again, all fours or down dog, whatever's right for you, just press that top foot open. Press that top foot over to your right until the heel gets heavy, 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 and maybe you feel it wanting to land on the ground. Bottom foot pivots, left hand gets heavy as needed. Please modify, squeeze glutes, lift hips and heart. As you're ready, arm and head fall overhead. And wild things, I welcome your howl. Oh, it only freaks my cats out just a little bit. Inhale there. As you exhale, pull from the navel, hug in, strong core, shift forward, and draw that knee forward between your hands. Heel towards midline, and then walk the back foot back as far as you can. Puff up the chest. Draw your spine forward, lengthen out, push your hips back, find a rest for your head when you're ready. Maybe stacking up higher. Please support your knee or hip as, as necessary. Zero sharp knee pain allowed, everything else. Ah, sensational. Breathe into it and let go. Soft jaw, soft tongue, deep, full breaths. Letting go breaths in the nose, out the mouth. Last breath or two here, breathe and repeat your yes, I am.
stay as you like. When you're ready, take your time, walk your hands up next to your hips, pull on the earth a bit, and puff your chest up as you drag your heart forward. Inhale, bright. Next inhale, back to us under, and lift that front knee up and slide it back. Let's come again to reset in Balasana, or child's pose. Push your hips back and breathe low back. Simply breath. We'll hear again for a few breaths or one long bees breath. Exhale and empty. Inhale your yes and sweet honey in the mind. Inhale and stretch back. As you exhale, lift from your navel and unfurl. Turn your toes under. And again, be really mindful if you've got anything going on with your knees. So we're going to come into a tuck here. So maybe that you want to lift your knees and have less closure. Um, so you're in more of a standing tuck. Otherwise, first press back as you're able into a really small tuck here, a tight sort of little ball weight back into the heels my heels don't like to land if yours do great go for it and arms out in front to counterbalance so you don't fall back and let your head rest onto the knees and breathe your back body Feeling that contraction of being and connecting it to maybe situations or feelings or thoughts or habits or anything that feels like a contracted state for you that you would like to invite opening into. Let's begin to do that. From this contraction here, we'll slowly open into a squat, malasana. You may want to step the feet wider to get the heels down for your squat, and then press elbows into your thighs to work your shoulders wide, hips wide, lift your lower back, lift your heart. Breathe here in malasana. I'm going to hop forward just because I want to be at the front of my mat. If you're not at the front of your mat, you may also invite the froggy hop so we're going to move next into lunge so from malasana as you're ready you're always welcome to take flight lifting the knees up shifting forward squeeze the legs together beneficial contraction of core 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 nice and strong there and then set your right foot down and step your left foot back Find a low lunge here, and we'll play with contraction in this pose. Contraction and expansion, rather, spanda. Inhale, open heart, back heel back, head forward, and exhale, turning in, melting. A little contraction there. Inhaling, opening, breathing that expansion of hips and heart. Follow your breath. Always seeking the fullest expression of breath with the pose that you can, even if you need to slow down more than I'm doing or whatever. As you're ready, squeeze the feet together, pull that right hip back and reach your right arm forward. Breathe that right side body long. Long, long side body, stretch it out. Squeeze those inner thighs and open right hand. Face chest to the sky. Scoop the shoulders down the back. Lift your heart and lay back. Next inhale, stretch that right arm way back behind you and let your left ear go heavy to the shoulder. Stretch out that connection of neck and shoulder there. Any little movements there. And stay in any of those shapes that you feel like you need it most or pass a kitty or arm vinyasa.
Last two breaths here. And then hands down. And I'm gonna actually switch orientation so I'm facing the screen. So we're gonna walk inside of that leg and turn heels in and toes out. Elbows to the thighs, sink low. Rock into your hips there. Purring. And let's open that up even more. Devi Asana, sink low. Heels out, toes parallel, feet parallel, arms wide. Inhale, squeeze muscles to bones. Shine out, feel this full expression of the star of your being here. Breathe your yes, I am. And follow any exhale to flow the arms down, interlace the hands behind you, squeeze the palms together. Again, beneficial contraction that opens and lifts the heart. Breathing that expansion of your heart, your heart's yes, your courageous opening to life, I am. Inhale, bright across the wings of your heart. And as you exhale, pull the feet together isometrically to help you spin thighs back, reach heart forward and bow in. Little bend in the elbows there, squeeze the shoulders together, relax your neck. Next exhale or so, flow the hands down and make your way back towards the front of your mat. And again, step on back, child's pose. Inhale and stretch it out. Exhale, roll on back, come into your tuck, picking up the pace a little bit, still playing with our shpanda. Inhale that tuck. Knees wide, next inhale, pressing into your malasana, or come right into crow. Knees wide, squeeze to center, claw your fingers, shift forward and fly. So anything in squat or crow. <sighs> Again here, we wanna be at the front of the mat. Once you're ready, left foot down and right leg back squeeze into the core there hug it in stretch shoulders down the back heart forward blossoming out inhale as you exhale next back knee and head to the floor melting down inhale open heel back heart forward exhale bowing and melting a few more breaths like that And as you open up this time, hands inside that front leg. Again, heels in, toes out, elbows to the thighs, seat low, spine long, soft jaw, sidle into your hips. Ah, letting go, breaths here in the nose. Wow, out the mouth. Next inhale, come up onto the legs, hands where your elbows were. Inhale, press long, exhale, let's press and spiral. Get a little twist in there, squeeze to center. Inhale, open, exhale, spiral. Follow your breath.
I want to acknowledge that I noticed that I did miss something there. I believe in my switching sides for the camera. Forgot it. Uh oh, Zoom life. Uh, okay, not that I never forgot things before. So let's come back um, and get that rotated tw um, twist on the, I guess all twists are rotated, but that gentle twist on the first side, pulling that uh, second side, left leg, pulling that hip back, reaching the fingers forward, squeeze the inner thighs, and use that squeeze to open face chest to the sky. Strong in your core, heart lifts, shoulders down the back. Stay here or stretch that top arm back, bottom ear to the shoulder, reach soft neck, <sighs> soft jaw breathe. Again, pause in any of these shapes, reaching forward to the sky or back. For a few more breaths, arm vinyasa. And then there's the part where we're supposed to switch orientation. And here we go. When you're ready, next time you come down, back into your wide-legged stance. <sighs> Reset, finding your alignment there. And then when you're ready, open up. Devi Asana, sink it low. Tailbone down, navel up, heart up. Swoop down to the earth, if you will. Sweep the earth open wide and gather up all there is to be grateful for. Stretch your legs and stand tall. As you exhale, sink it in, drawing it into your heart. Grateful for all the abundance, the fullness of your life and giving back to the earth, opening wide, gathering up with the breath. Three more. Shine it out, superstar. Parallel feet, pull them isometrically together, hug into your core, squeeze the shoulders on the back, lift your heart. Deep, full breaths there. Little core engagement, lengthen the tailbone, lift your navel, make sure your knees are soft. Yeah, nice adjustment there, beautiful. Deep, full breaths through the body mind. Breathe and repeat your yes here, I am. A big inhale here as you exhale, float the arms down, interlace your hands, squeeze the palms, little bend in the elbows, squeeze the shoulders, and lift your heart bright. <clears throat> Excuse me, breathe to any edge of back bend here. Big, huge inhale wide across your heart center and exhale, lead with your heart. Come on forward, forward, fold. Clasp by the hands overhead. Of course, if there's hamstring stuff in the forward fold, bend the knees, hug in, stronger core. Release the hands maybe and just focus on where the attention is being called the most. You're welcome to stay static here in this variation we came in with. You could release the arms down and hold your legs or walk the hands back and draw the head further towards the earth. You're welcome to turn heels in, toes out here and take a little swim in your hips, a little side to side, feeling into that space that you're making today, breathing your yes into it. Optionally, you are upside down if you want to bounce towards handstand or land your head and light it up towards headstand. All of that is welcome. About five or six more breaths. Find what's right for you.
last breath or two, beginning to find your way down if you're up or to even out side to side if you're playing that way. And then as you come down, step on through and come to sit. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Oh, yeah, it'll be like this for a while, probably lots of throat clearing. All right, hugging in, hugging in, lifting up through the heart. So we're going to balance on our sits bones now and find some core strength in this contraction. And we'll play with one of my favorite playful practices for core. And that is this tuck, imagining tuck as a seed, if you will, a seed of intention or an actual seed maybe you're planting in your life. And we'll slowly begin to expand that. And that could be really slow. You could hold the ankles, hold the legs, hold the earth, whatever you're holding, let it be a support, that rooting to blossom the lift of your heart. And then keep growing, <clears throat> extend, expanding as much as is right for you to any edge of boat or sprout, depending what you want to call it today, going with my growing things metaphor. This here is sprout. So is this. So is this. So is this. 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 Sprout. Find your choice of sprout. Broccoli, sunflower, so many good sprouts, alfalfa. <clears throat> Breathing your sprout. And then slowly we begin to blossom, opening the legs, opening the arms. And again, that could look like knees bent. That could look like support on the earth. All kinds of different flowers in our garden. <clears throat> and back. Tuck, that could always start on the floor to take pause as you need. Hug in, lift and pull into your legs or the earth to support the lift of the lower back. Keep that lower back lifting, heart lifting, and as inspired, begin to grow your sprout. Sprout, sprout, and blossom, yeah. All right, kids, at your own pace as you like. Tuck or seed, sprout, blossom. Please take it at your own pace. I'm going to do about five more at kind of that pace. Seed, sprout, blossom. Seed, sprout, blossom. Three more. Oh, you mull their own sound. And feet together, knees wide. <clears throat> Take hold of your ankles. Use that hold of the ankles to pull your lower back in, heart up, push a bit into your feet, widen your knees, and maybe let them butterfly a bit because, you know, butterflies and flowers. Ah, <sighs> Thank you, body. If this is challenging for you, please sit up higher, higher, higher. Sit up on something. There should be zero sharp knee pain, and ideally we can move that lower back curve in and up. Stay upright as you like. If you are going forward fold, then really your hips should be higher than your knees here. So um, to be uh, to do that right, I'm gonna do it right and give myself some support because I'm not one whose hips land higher than the knees there. So getting the hips higher than the knees, knees wide, pull onto your ankles or the earth in front of you, press into the feet so you keep the ankles as strong as you can so we don't we're not stretching a sickle there and that'll help keep the knees protected as usual and then walk forward any edge bowing in lengthening out
please stay in that forward fold as long as you like. Or sitting up wherever your edge is, last few breaths, and I'll invite a transition. Again, you could stay with that and be more restful or one last little set of um, folding and unfolding, contraction and expansion. Pick your knees up with your hands, gather them up, and come to lie down on your back. As you come to lie down, hug your knees into your chest and rock into your back. A little massage into low back there. Uh, and you could stay with this as long as you like or return to this or just inhale here and as you exhale curl up head to knees tuck in inhale here as you exhale unfurl low boat inhale here as you exhale feet to the floor bridge up elbows to the floor squeeze lift your chest inhale here you could exhale and ripple back down Inhale, ripple back up or at the top, interlace the hands, squeeze and stay up. So rippling in and out or find your edge. You could also put a block under your hips and come into a restorative bridge pose or just clasp the hands, work the shoulders together, squeeze onto your block, real or imaginary and spin your thighs down, lengthen tailbone out, lift the navel, lift your heart, lift your chest. Deep full breaths in the nose, out the mouth, soft jaw, open throat, relaxed tongue. See about vibrating your heart, if you will, with me with one long ah, shining up that jewel of your heart. Exhale and empty. Inhale your heart's yes. Ah. Again. Oh. Inhale, lift up, exhale and ripple down. Inhale, stretch arms out, legs out. Reach long and exhale, tuck in. Stay in your tuck or inhale your tuck and exhale boat. Stay in boats or inhale your boat and exhale, pull feet in, elbows down, bridge up, inhale, lift, exhale, ripple down, coming in and out or again, holding at the top about five breaths, simply breathful or breathful with vibration, imagining that vibration like a jewelry cleaner shining up the jewel of your heart. Breathe your yes. Oh. Oh. Big inhale, lift up as you exhale, release and ripple down. We're going to go one more through this little sequence here. You could hold anything you like. Otherwise, inhale, reach, exhale, tuck. Inhale here, exhale, low boat. Inhale here, exhale, press into heels and elbows, bridge up, coming in and out with your breath or holding at the top five breaths or maybe two or three long ahs. Ah. any exhale to ripple down once you're complete step your feet as wide as your mat and inhale both knees to one side stretch the arms up overhead 
And exhale, navel back, knees through center. Inhale, knees to the other side, stretch it out. Exhale, navel back, knees through center. Follow your breath, side to side, deep, full breaths. And please stay with this side to side as long as that feels good for you or with the feet as wide as your mat. The next time both knees come to your left, left ankle over right thigh, draw that knee down. You could stay just like that or support your shin if there's any discomfort in the knee or maybe reach down for the bottom foot, draw it in towards your seat. Take hold of that same side wrist and lean up and over on the ground towards your left as you're stretching out that right side really long and deep full breaths there. In the nose, uh, out the mouth. Please stay with that or keep the setup of your legs and pick it up. Interlace the hands behind the bottom thigh and pull that bottom thigh towards you as you use your left elbow to ease that left or top thigh away. Flex those top toes back, straight strong ankle again to protect your knee. Pull in as you press away, rock and roll it around. You could stay with that, just rock and rolling it around there or playing with the isometrics, just pulling in as you push away or add some core. Keep that ankle and knee as squared as you can, pulling that right thigh back, left thigh moving away. Inhale, interlace hands behind the head. Exhale, curl in, navel back, sacrum and shoulders lift. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Playing with that. Stay playing with that, or maybe you want to walk that, uh, extend that top leg up, walk up over the bottom. Um, okay, so you're extending the bottom leg up, walking over the top ankle into a palatina or plow pose variation. Maybe curling up to the leg, maybe drawing the foot towards overhead, especially if you did take a headstand, um, press into the back of the head, move that leg overhead. Oh, just as much as you can and breathe. Back body line. Yes, I am. And take your time. Slowly roll out as you're ready, both legs straight, palms can come to the earth, resist your roll down, and maybe you'll let that all the way through and into Matsyasana or fish pose. Hands can come under the edge of your seat, squeeze into your shoulders, press into the elbows, lift your chest, let the head fall or roll over the shoulders. Puff up your chest with breath. Ah, deep full breaths here. Follow any exhale to come back down. Hug into the knees. Step your feet to the earth. Knees, uh, feet as wide as the mat or so. And knees side to side. Inhale, stretch. Exhale through center. Inhale, stretch. And just follow your breath side to side as long as you like. Breath full movement. And breath full, yes. And then the next time that both knees come to the right, or when you're ready, right ankle over left thigh, draw it down. Again, maybe that's enough. Maybe pull that left foot in towards your seat. Take hold of the left wrist and lift up and over. Breathe there. 
<sighs> Letting go breaths. And please stay with that as long as that's right for you. Or keep the shape of the legs and pick it up whenever you're ready. Interlace the hands behind your bottom thigh and pull bottom thigh back as you use the top elbow to ease that top thigh away. Really flex those right toes back. Straight, strong right ankle. Soft jaw. Pull in as you press away. Square that top knee and ankle. <sighs> Keep the mouth soft, breath deep and full. And again, playing with isometrics, pulling in as you press away, rock and roll it around or add the core as inspired. Hands behind the head, keep that ankle and knee square as you can. Inhale, open there and as you exhale, navel back, sacrum and shoulders up, curl in. Inhaling, open. Exhale to curl. Strong breaths, long full breaths of your yes, wherever you're at. Again, please stay with that. Or if you did on the other side and you'd like to, more back body line. Extend that left leg or bottom leg up. Walk up over the right ankle, curling into the back leg and drawing it maybe towards overhead as much as you can. Play with any variations in the shape or whatever shape's calling you right now. Listen to your body. Three or four more breaths. <sighs> Please stay with any of that as you like or unwind slowly, maybe into your plow, both legs or hands to the floor and unwinding through the vertebrae carefully, maybe coming into Matsyasana from here or if you'd like to, it is easier to access from a seat. So you could always start sitting up, hands under the edge of your seat, squeeze the shoulders on the back. Bring your elbows to bend, elbows to the floor, squeeze the shoulders, puff up the chest, lift, lift your heart and pour yourself over your shoulders, head towards the floor. Breathe wide across the wings of the heart, your hearts, yes, I am. Ah. <sighs> Last big bright inhale there as you exhale, come on down. You might hug the knees in. If you'd like there a little twist to either side or just come into happy baby, mm, rock your baby. Listen to your body right now. Full moon, great time for intuition. We're shining the light on those dark places that we don't often or always look at. Listening in. What does your body want right now? What lost movements or shapes would feel good for you before we come into final resting? And I encourage you to support yourself in final resting. Today, maybe setting up a Supta Baddha Konasana and lifting your heart and your head. So your head's a little higher than your heart, but your heart is lifted and supported open. So the shoulders just melt open. And maybe you rest feet together, knees wide, so your hips get a passive opening, in which case for most of us, support underneath your legs. Find the shape. And it's right for you. Take your time. Move slowly. Support yourself. Really feeling into where you're at.
Thank you, beautiful humans, for caring for yourself, for supporting yourself, for finding the things that you need to support you. And once you find your final resting shape, inhale and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze muscles to bones and exhale, ah, let go. Give your body to the earth. Open your heart and mind to the sky. If there's any residual busyness or tension in the body, inhale and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Gather it up, exaggerate it, hold, 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 and then again. Give your body to the earth. Open your heart and mind to the sky. And again, I'm going to share with you some of this yummy little short essays from Mary Oliver. I walked all one spring day, upstream, sometimes in the midst of the ripples, sometimes along the shore. My company were violets, Dutchman's breeches, spring beauties, trilliums, bloodroot, ferns rising so curled one could feel the upward push of the delicate hairs upon their bodies. My parents were downstream, not far away, then farther away, because I was walking the wrong way, upstream instead of downstream. Finally, I was advertised on the hot line of help, and yet there I was, slopping along happily in the stream's coolness, so maybe it was the right way after all. If this was lost, let us all be lost always. The beech leaves were just slipping their copper coats, pale green and quivering, they arrived into the year. My heart opened and opened again. The water pushed against my effort, then its glassy permission to step ahead touched my ankles. The sense of going toward the source. I do not think that I ever, in fact, returned home. Do you think there is anything not attached by its unbreakable cord to everything else. Plant your peas and your corn in the field when the moon is full or risk failure. This has been understood since planting begin. The attention of the seed to the draw of the moon is, I suppose, measurable like the tilt of the planet or maybe not. Maybe you have to add some immeasurable ingredient made of the hour, the singular field, the hand of the sower.
sense your body as part of this earth, held, supported, nourished by Great Mother Earth. Remember yourself whole, perfect, beautiful, healthy, healed. Notice the sky kissing and breathing your body with prana shakti, with life force. Welcome this breath of life with your yes to life. Breathe and repeat your mantra, your I am. Let your breath become so bright and rich with this I am that it easily flows through your body, filling you up and overflows out of you, rippling out into the world. And as inspired, maybe begin to wiggle and spiral and stretch it out, breathe your body bright. Imagine your yes, again, shining out into all of your actions and interactions, all of your relations to all of your environment. Breathe and stretch yourself long, feel your fullness. And of course, your home, you could stay resting as long as you like in meditation or shavasana or any resting, or gently make your way back to one side, feet to the floor, knees bent. Pause as you transition and make your way back to any easy seat. And take your time coming to your seat, soft neck, eyes closed, awareness inward. As you return, notice what's moved or changed since our first seat together today. What feels different? What energy is alive for you right now? Follow any exhale to touch the earth and ground down. Again, giving thanks to all those who walk this path with us throughout all time and space, and to all the teachers, gurus, and lineages who have handed these practices down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Follow your next inhale and open wide, gathering up that great full moon or bright sky energy wherever you're at, and bring the hands together in center and focus the energy of our collective practice down through the mind, mind down into the heart present, this one moment, this one breath. May we be present for the pulsation of our own spanda. May we honor our processes. May we honor the need to turn in. May we allow ourselves the freedom to shine out, knowing that all of it, natural, our birthright. All of it is welcome. Exhale and pour your breath out. Inhale your hearts, yes, if you will join me, one om with the hands in the sign of universal oneness, and one hring pressing into your pinkies and thumbs blossoming that heart's lotus. Exhale and empty. Inhale your yes for om. Oh.
and reach and rise, if you will, that lotus heart up to the sky and blossom the beauty of you all out, all around you, rippling out into the world to join the beauty of the rest of you, all of nature. Namaste and Jai Ma. Thank you. Thank you all for practicing. Thank you for practicing with me. So honored to share these practices with you all. Let me know if there are any questions or comments, or if you want to join my newsletter or any of the things. I'm very findable online, Lucid Yoga, Lucid Yoga and Movement. I'm going to stop the live streaming and I'll see you all next time. And I'll say hi and bye 